the adventurers. In our last video, we were on the coast. Today, we are more inland. In fact, we're in Riverside County, California. This place, you can see, already looks like it's a lot drier than where we were in the last video. So hopefully we should see a whole plethora of different stuff because the habitat is so very different. So no time to waste. Let's get flipping. That's so cool. It's about the same size as the one that I saw here earlier this year. Yeah. But on the Stop other biting. side of the park. So this little fellow is a coach whip and it is a juvenile and they have this really cool sort of striping patterns. Now the adults, they look completely different. They almost look like braided whips and that's kind of where they get their name coach whip. And this is the first time that we've actually seen these guys on the channel. So very, very exciting. Great new species for me and for you guys too. So missed the release uh, there. He, uh, that little snake kind of jumped at me, scared, I dropped him and he snuck into a burrow really quick. But I'm sure we'll find more today. All right, Danny just flipped a tarantula. That's kind of neat. It's a little tiny one. Um, maybe like the size of a silver dollar. So very cool. Check out the colors on this guy. It's like very iridescent. Kind of looks like a rainbow. Another one of those. This is a male uh, granite spiny lizard. Take a look at that. Zeev just lassoed that lizard and oh my goodness I mean it looks like it sat in a bucket of blue paint it is just so bright and colorful underneath Look at those colors wow ridiculous just ridiculous beautiful male and breeding colors that is, I have never seen that, that before pale. even the back is nice that purple stripe yeah. along the back Whoa. Right turquoise legs. Look at the scales. Yeah. See why they call them spinies. So. Yeah, these these scales are all keeled uh, with little tips on the end. Yeah. Except for the belly. Just so small. Look at him puffing his chest out. Look at his like. He's like, hey, I'm tough. Just absolutely stunning. And those tails get these super fatty deposits on them. Nice and thick. Little chin, huh? Look at you. All right, snap a couple pictures and on our way. Very cool. Well, this is a delight. This is a red diamond rattlesnake. It is one of the species of special concern in this area. Uh, so we just have to observe it. We can't, um, we can't touch it. Not that we would be touching rattlesnakes, but very cool to see. Very cool to hear it. And just like with all our rattlesnakes, I try to keep my distance. Sometimes people like Zeev will get a little closer. Uh, this is a little too close for comfort for me for him to get a good shot. But really need to see this guy uh, pose for us really nice. One thing I always thought was cool about these rattlesnakes is that they'll breathe really loudly as part of their defense display. Here, listen to it carefully here. All right, we're gonna let this guy just chill under the tree there, and we're gonna continue on our way. Well, we've had some great luck today. This is a blainsfield horn lizard. Now, this is another species of special concern. So again, we cannot touch this guy. They eat harvester ants, and unfortunately, the harvester ants are losing the battle against the Argentine ants. And so a lot of the diet that these guys are used to is kind of going away. Um, but in this area, there's probably a lot of harvest ants since uh, this, this fellow is hanging out here. Got it? Yeah. No, good size one too. Hell yeah. You want to take it? Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> I know. Uh. Check it out. Just got this one I flipped. Uh, nice, good looking gopher snake. Nice See that? Gorgeous. Really gorgeous yellow. Right under that tire. Yeah, I almost didn't see it. Let's put him right in the middle of the Go on back to where he came from. If you 
you can fit under there. Okay, probably go from the inside. Yeah. Inside of the tire. Uh, he's making his way. Nice. Trying. Doing his valiant effort. Do you need help? Let's get another. There you go. Pack it down <laughs> on top. <laughs> Great. Good enough. Yeah. He's good. Bye bye. Oh, check it out. Still tired. There we go. Big one. Woo! Awesome. <laughs> All right, this is another first for the YouTube channel. This is a California king snake. Now, these snakes are incredibly beautiful and usually very easy to handle, which is great. We get them in two different flavors here in California. One is like this with this sort of brown and yellow coloration. And they can also have a more black and white pattern to them or somewhere in between. Brown and white also makes sense. There's, there's a lot of variation. And they have a lot of aberrant patterns to them as well. But this guy is pretty sort of standard, sort of fits, fits the California King Snake bill perfectly. Uh, nice. Tarantula number two for the day. This one's a bit bigger than the one before. But still not really like a big adult. But cool. Hey adventurers, it has been quite the day. We've seen a lot of great stuff. Uh, a bunch of different types of snakes. A good number of new interesting lizards. Really just uh, success, a very successful day uh, in... Whoa, ah, somebody found something. <laughs> what are you doing all the way here, buddy? Perfect spot for close enough to the rocks. Yeah. What a beautiful rosy boa. All right, check out a close-up look at this rosy boa. Now, these guys, pretty easy to identify. Nothing else out here looks like this. They often have this orange or brown uh, stripe down the back and then a couple on the side. Um, these ones out here are very, very speckled. Uh, sometimes those lines can be really straight. I think the coastal ones are straighter. So really awesome find. Try uh, I think him. it's a female though. Let me see. Try it's pretty him. low too for it to be a male on the tail. Males will usually have a little longer. What do you mean? The where the vent is, mm -hmm. loca, it's low like the tail's not as long on the females, I believe. It looks like it has spurs though. Does it? I can't see. Yeah, look right hold on. Right between my nails right there. <laughs> Here's a, a new Southern Pacific rattlesnake that Danny just flipped, all nice and coiled up there. Unfortunately, it's kind of in some bad scenery under a microwave, but... Okay, good for the snake. Yeah, well, we take what we can get. The snake's pretty happy. <laughs> Got mad and went. Like, I'm gonna make sure you know I'm here just in case you didn't that whole time. <laughs> then we just found another red diamond rattlesnake. Look at that color. All right, Zeev just found something that's a lifer for me, but he hasn't told me what it is yet. It's a surprise. We are. Maybe not to you, but I think it's a cooler flip than a boa. All right, something in his hands. Oh, dude! A neonate, too. You never, ever see babies. Look at that! What is it, a long nose or something? No, way smaller. Ring neck? Thread snake. 
This a blind snake, a neonate blind snake. So these tiny little worm-like snakes are thread snakes. This particular one is a western thread snake. Now they live basically their entire life underground. Uh, so we were only able to find it by flipping over a rock. And if you can look really closely, oh, let's get, let's figure this out. If you can see its face at some point, you'll see that it does have little tiny eyes, but those are vestigial, which means that they, um, basically they're kind of remnants of ancient ancestors that used to live above ground. Um, so even though they have those eyes, they can't use them. They're not useful for anything. So <laughs> Zeev just flipped up, Cover her back up when you're something pretty cool here. That is the egg sac of a black widow, and right under it is the black widow. These are fairly well-known venomous spiders, so we don't want to get too close to it. But really cool to see that egg sac, too. All right, we're gonna cover it back up and see what else we can find today. You know, all this flipping can really produce some cool stuff. Here is a scorpion that we found. Unfortunately, I don't know too much about scorpions, but this one was pretty big uh, and pretty cool looking. But, uh, you know, we'll put him back under his, his cover in just a moment. Yep. Oh my goodness! Bam! That's amazing. Here we go. I feel good about my day now. Oh. Ow, 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 ow. Look at yeah. this. That's crazy. I've never been bitten by one before. So this is a granite night lizard. Uh, they're night lizards because they're nocturnal. And they sleep under these rock areas. Cool. Sure. What? They're actually diurnal, despite the name. Oh, they're yeah. diurnal? Okay. Do that again. Oh man. Despite the name, they're diurnal. Why are they even called night know. lizards then? I think when they were first discovered, they, they were uh, presumed to be nocturnal. I hear people but see them at night though, too. Like you can. You see them at night, but they're pre predominantly diurnal, apparently. I'm a big one, too. I'll probably just keep in the, uh, what I said. It <laughs> makes, makes me look human. Yeah. Gorgeous. This is a lifer for me. I'm very excited. Now, not only was this a new species for me, this is the first night lizard in the in the whole genus that I've ever seen. We have six different species in Southern California, and so it was great to finally see one of these these guys. And I did look up some research once I got home because uh, I was definitely confused about why they're called night lizards if they're active during the day. And while I think Zeev got this one a little bit wrong, they can be active during the daytime, often maybe more of the sort of dawn and dusk period, but these guys are mostly active at night. They are nocturnal. Now, some of the other night lizards have slightly different patterns. Some of them are more active during the day, but this particular one, the granite night lizard, along with a few others in this area, are active at night and that's in part why they can be difficult to find because uh, it's dark out and they have good camouflage they have a lot of dark colors to them and so they it can be very tricky for someone like me to come across them in the wild scamper away little buddy scamper away there he goes well, what an exciting day we saw so much today it was really great so let's keep it short and sweet. I'm Greg Schechter. This is Schechter Natural History, and I'll see you in the field.